So for this problem right here, what we need to do is determine how to write the inequality from the graph. So what we're done, what we're given is we're given a compound inequality, meaning our inequality has two different constraints. One we can look at. Remember, our values or the shaded region is what is makes our inequality true. So we could say all numbers that are equal to negative two. See, negative two is true because it's shaded in. So we can say all numbers, including all numbers that are greater than negative two and include negative two, makes this true. So you can say x is greater than or equal to negative two. You guys see that? So what that means is all numbers that are greater than or equal to negative two. So what that really is is you know a little circle dot. And that represents all the numbers going to the right. But that's not it, right? Because it stops at 6. And then at 6, this, if you say here, you could say, well, all numbers not including 6, but that are less than 6, work this way. So you could say x is less than 6. So that means all numbers that are less than 6, but do not include 6, are a part of this inequality as well. So that looks like an open dot going all that way. However, guys, our graph is not these two graphs combined, is it? It's the intersection of these two graphs. So to represent the intersection, we use what type of words you want to think with? Yes, Lacey. And. And. So I'm going to say x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than 6. Does that make sense? Okay. When we're dealing with intersection, you're going to be dealing with and. All right. So that's how you find the inequality from a graph.